Record. Hey there, guys. We're recording now. Oh, I keep forgetting to do this. There we go. We're recording now, and we're going to do Psalm 41 today. Uh, it, as I was just reading through, I thought, well, this looks like a really nice one, and it's a, it's an interesting one, and I think it's pretty easy to understand. So I'm going to, like usual, I'm going to read through, listen to it, think about it. If you draw a picture as part of your thinking, right, part of your note taking, that's absolutely fine. But listen to what it says, or if you have your Bible, read along your, on your own. Listen to what it says and just think about what it means. See if you can connect. See if you can connect parts of the psalm to other parts of the psalm. See if you can connect parts of this psalm to other things in the Bible, other church songs that you've sung. Even if you've just read a story or watched a movie that it reminds you of. Those sorts of connections are really cool. So let's read Psalm 41 together. This is, oh, is it going blue and funny? Let me see if I can change the color. There we go. Was it looking color blue on the paper? Yeah, it was kind of going blue. There we Not go. Blue. I think that's better now. Okay. This is Psalm 41 uh, for the chief musician, a Psalm of David. And it's only 13 verses. It's not a very big one. It's actually, if I remember right, it's the last psalm in book one. The book of Psalms is split up into parts, and that might have something to do with the scrolls that it was written on. And so Psalm 41 here, you read through, and then it breaks, and now it's going to be Psalm 42 as part of book two. And I think that might um, have something to do with verse 13. Maybe verse 13, which is a part of Psalm 41, is more of the transition between book one and book two. That just jumped into my head, and I've been wondering about it. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm going to treat it as part of Psalm 41, but that's something that we can think about. Okay, Psalm 41. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the day of evil. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. And deliver not thou him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will support him on his couch of languishing. Thou makest all his bed in his sickness. I said, O Lord, have mercy upon me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against me. Mine enemies speak evil against me, saying, When shall he die and his name perish? And if he comes to see me, he speaks vanity. His heart gathers iniquity to itself. And when he goes abroad, he tells it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, cleaves fast unto him. And now that he lies, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon me to raise me up, that I may requite them. By this I know that you delight in me, because mine enemy does not triumph over me. As for me, you uphold me in my integrity and set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. So there's the whole psalm. You can fit just about all of it on the screen. There is the psalm. What do you think about it? What's it about? What connections do you think of? Alice? I think it's about the enemies saying like he isn't strong he's going to die soon but then god helps him up and they are him okay. and he is them mostly so like they switch positions ah the enemy says and that's a big part of the psalm. The enemy says things about David, and you say that the enemy and David switches? Yeah, they switch. That's really an interesting idea. I had not thought of that at all. Like, the enemies are really 
having a good time and David isn't, and then David has a good time and the enemies don't. Okay, I like that. That's a really cool idea. What else? Yep. I'm not a six. Well, like, I don't know what song it's called, but in a song it said, I won't let my enemies triumph over me. And it said that in the psalm. And I also noticed it said couch again. Okay. Okay. So the enemy says, and then the enemy don't let, I'm just going to do letter E, triumph. Right, that was in this psalm, and there is a there. I can't remember the name of the song either. I'm I'm really bad at remembering song names. That's a good part. And then you said that there was a couch, so you can write, either write the word couch or you can try to draw a couch. I'm just going to draw a really ugly couch. Apparently, mm. I'm going to draw a couch. That actually looks. He has the couch thing in it again. Good, good connection. What else? Anything else, guys? Is um, I noticed, go ahead. I noticed that <laughs> I noticed that again. Um, his friends are like he used to have his friends, but now his friends are against him. Yeah, that's scary. Friend turns to enemy again. I'm just do the big letter E. The friends turn into the enemy. That's sad. What else? Um, it's sort of like the guy that was like all droopy and sad, like the broken picture on the skull. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And he's like, whenever he walks, steps outside, everyone would run away from him. Yeah. Oh, what, what, um, I'm doing a bad job remembering. Uh, what number was that? Uh, was it Psalm 31? I think it might be Psalm 31. It was when his it was when his friends was put were putting out the the nets. Yeah, yeah, it's Psalm 31. Yeah, and um, see so here they're running away yeah. and they're plotting. Yeah, good connection, guys. Now there's if you want to make that connection. You're going to do that a lot in the book of Psalms because a lot of the Psalms are about that. But that's exactly right. In fact, right here in the 30s and the 40s, because this is Psalm 41 and the other one was Psalm 31. That's a neat number connection. In the 30s and the 40s, David talks about that kind of problem a lot. I think that some of the Psalms were collected that way. So these are kind of the all my friends are my enemies Psalms or I have a lot of troubles, Psalms. That's a good connection. Anything else before we start looking at the different verses? Any other thoughts? No? All right, well, let's look at the verses. All right, that's the wrong piece of paper. Okay, so let's look at the first little bit. You guys are doing a great job at making connections. I love this. I'm always, that's probably my favorite part. What does this make you think of? That's my favorite part of this class. Okay. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him on the day of evil. Well, that's nice. What does it mean to consider the poor? That means like give them, give them, give them food. Be thoughtful. Give them yeah. Take care of them. Can you think of any Bible stories or something like that where somebody's the doing good that? Samaritan. It's kind of like that helping. Yeah. So here it is. If somebody is considering the poor, right? He's thinking about poor. Does that mean you just kind of think about it and that's it? Yeah, it means to like do stuff. Yeah, you actually need to do stuff, right? That's the story of, I'll even write good Samaritan. Sorry, what it's was like that? thinking of what you can thinking of what you can do for them. Yes, thinking of what you can do, not just hmm. It's sad that there's poor people. All right, I'm gonna eat this hamburger by myself. No, that's not right. <laughs> we are considering their needs and what can we do, right? 
Okay. Mm -hmm. so it sounds like when I was reading this this morning, I thought, well, this is a psalm about how to do good deeds. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him on the day of evil. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. Do you see this? And this? And this? These are three statements of if you pay attention and help poor people, what does God do? Well, yeah, God will pay attention to you. He'll deliver you. He'll preserve you. He'll keep you alive. You'll be blessed. Oh, so if, if we are considering the poor, well, guess what happens to us? The light from heaven shines down on us too, right? So that's, that's a blessing. Okay. So I, when I started reading the psalm, I thought, oh, this is a nice psalm about good deeds. And then it changes. Then it says, and deliver not thou him unto the will of his enemies. If you consider the poor and decide to deliver the poor to the enemies, what? Right? Oh, that's just mean. There are some times where enemies and people do that. Can you think of Bible, even if you don't say them out loud, can you think of Bible stories where people had a hard time and were delivered over to the enemy? Actually, this is by David. Can you think of times when the enemies were yeah. to David and people betrayed him? There's some times where that happened, where they would go up to Saul. Like, 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 when, like, when, sorry, like when we, like, like when, like, when in it, one of the Psalms, there is, they, it was like, they, they're ready to catch. Yeah, exactly. And, and Mr. Dan, mm -hmm. and, and like, I was thinking of like Potiphar and, and Potiphar's wife um, made it look like David um, like was trying to run away and do uh, bad things. So they put him in prison. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And when Joseph, they did that to Joseph. Okay. And so it looks like it's a psalm about good deeds, but really it's actually a psalm, don't do the bad deeds. The Lord will support him upon the couch of languishing. What does it mean? What is couch of languishing? Comfort. Like, no, what actually languishing is the opposite of comfort and happiness. Oh. <laughs> it's the couch of mega sorrows and tears crying. Oh, it's the soaked couch that David was on. Yeah, yeah. wet one, he filled it with his tears. And so here's this big couch and David is just languishing. He's not rejoicing, he's languishing. So there's his hand and he's, he's just in despair. And, oh. And you can draw. It's comfortable on a couch, so. Say what? It's comfortable. It's comfortable on a couch, so there's all the more reason to thrash about. Yeah, yeah. So here he is. He's 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 languishing on his couch. Oh. Now I'm making it funny, but honestly, David had really sad things he was dealing with, right? He's not just complaining like a lazy person. And then you can draw. Um, like he, like somebody stole his ice cream. Yeah, you know, yeah. Where it's, it's not like, Mama, my brother is annoying. No, it's not that. This is, these are real enemy problems, right? But guess what? The Lord will support him on the couch of languishing. I think it's like this poor. Thou makest all his bed in his sickness. I think this is a complicated phrase, but I think God will make his bed and take care of his bed, even if this poor man is what? Sick. Sick. And so that's then what this theme becomes, how David is sick. Now, think about it as we read through. Is David saying he is 
actually sick? Or is David saying that this is so sad that he feels sick? Don't answer yet. Think about that as we re read through. Is it real sickness or does it feel like sickness? Okay, Alice, you had something? Okay, we'll, we'll worry about that later. All right, verse four. I said to the Lord, have mercy upon me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against me. Mine enemies speak evil against me, saying, I'll even put this in quotation marks, when shall he die and his name perish? I, I gave him a weird voice. And if he come to see me, he speaks vanity, and he gathers iniquity to himself, and when he goes abroad, he tells it. And all that hate me, oh, we'll stop there. Okay, there's a lot of things here. He says in verse four, have mercy on me, why? Have mercy on me for I have, I've sinned. Does David pretend that he's perfect? No. No. David knows. But after he sinned, what are the enemies doing? They are, I'll underline these things. They are speaking evil against him. They're saying, when is he gonna die? When will his name die and perish? When they come and talk to David, do they speak healthy words? Mm -mm. Vanity, yeah. lies and foolishness. They gather iniquity in their heart and then they go out and they tell it. What do you think they're saying about David? They go and they meet David and they talk vanity to David and then they go out and they say stuff. What do you think they're saying about David? He isn't good. You should hate him. Bad stuff. Yeah. All right, so here's, here's a, vain, a vain enemy. And enemies in the book of Psalms sure have a lot of bad things to say, right? So here's their tongue, drawn a lot of tongues. And here's their, their talking hand and their other talking hand and they have hair, right? And I'll even give this guy a beard. And when they speak out, what comes out of their mouth? Vanity. Vanity. What does vanity mean? Bad things. Worthless. Bad things, worthless things. Here, I'll write that bigger so you can see it on your screen better. They're speaking vain, worthless things. They're, oh, I need to give them a red shirt because this is the enemy, right? I like the color red. You can wear the color red and not be an enemy. It's okay. Um, but they're saying vain things. They're talking iniquity. They're talking ugly things about David. And what is David doing? He's sitting on his couch. He's sad. And they're just talking ugly about him. All that hate me whisper together against me. Okay, here's a question. What are they whispering about? Is it like, shh, don't, don't tell anyone. We're going to do a surprise birthday party for David. Shh. No, it's like they're planning to do something bad to him. Like when they were like when they were planning to kill Jesus. Yeah. You know, oh, that's, that's that's a question. They're plotting. They're, they're they're secretly plotting. Yes. Didn't we hear about the secret plots and the traps and the snares in some of the other psalms? Mm -hmm. And I like how you connected to Jesus. How they were plotting and planning to yeah. um to to capture him and and to crucify him. Yeah, that's a good connection. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. Well, you know what? I'm just going to make the connection here with the picture of the cross. 
Because didn't they devise the hurt of Jesus? Right? They devise my hurt. Now, whenever I draw this, you know, I have to draw the empty tomb too, right? Because we know, we know that even though they planned this hurt, guess what? Jesus still arose, right? But still, they're, they're whispering against Jesus. They're devising his hurt. And David is Jesus's, uh, uh, well, yeah, David is in the line uh, of Jesus. He's one of the, uh, the, the grandfathers. So, so there's a connection there between David and Jesus. Mr. Dan? Yeah? Mr. Dan? Mm-hmm. And they thought that could foreshadow, like, so they were plotting on um, David in the, in that I thought they would foreshadow plotting on Jesus. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's that's the concept of the foreshadow. That's exactly right. You guys are making great connections. You'll be teaching this class next. All right. Uh, all who hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. Uh, an evil disease, they say, cleaves fast to him. Cleaves is to hold. An evil disease holds on to him. And now that he lies, he shall rise up no more. Does this, like, does it mean lie like telling a lie? Maybe lie be on the couch. Yeah, they think that he's sick. I'll put leprosy spots on him, which is actually going to make it look like he's just wearing a polka dot shirt. There, I'll put leprosy <laughs> spots on his body. They say it's an evil disease and he's dead and he'll never rise again. Well, guess what? Never rise no more. Um, if we're talking about shadows of Jesus, guess what happens? He rises. <laughs> Again, he, he rose more. When they killed Jesus, they said he's dead. He's oh, oh. But he arrived. Yeah. Yes, more. Yes. Oh my goodness, this is a neat connection. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, with uh, which did eat of my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. What is David saying here? Is the problem? He's been talking about enemies. Why does he say a friend here? His friends are turning away from him. I think it's because they think he's dead. So they, and so they think, well, the only person we can really join is enemies. That's a good guess. And that fits with the apostles when they leave Jesus. But I think that this is different. I think it's a little bit before that. Because he says that the familiar friend that David trusted in. Remember, this is David writing it, even if it sounds like Jesus. A friend that David trusted him, that David shared bread with, has lifted up his heel against me. Okay, what do you think it means to lift up your heel against somebody? I got a dirty foot. Kick them. Kick them? I, I think of like tripping him. Tripping him? There's a fun reference to a heel at the very beginning of the Bible. You remember that? Oh. Um, that, um, that Jesus, that um, Satan would crush Jesus' heel or something, but Jesus would crush his head. Good one, good one. That the snake would bite Eve's children on the heel, but someone from Eve's seed, one of her descendants, would crush the snake on the head. We, we say that that's Jesus. So that, that's one of the things that I thought of. So here is a guy, this is a friend, but is he behaving like a friend? No. No, that's no. Gave him a, a no. straight line map. And so if he's a friend, but he's not behaving like a friend, that means he's, he's one of these striped shirt guys. He starts out blue, but guess what he's turning into? Red. You think it's more red or more blue? Red. A little bit more red. red. And what? And and this is a friend that. What did he do with David? What did David share with this friend? Red. Red. Food. 
that's all he shared? Well, that's a good question. I Why, think... what, what does it mean? What does it mean to, I tried to give it a loaf of bread and it looks like a weird donut stick. All right, what does it mean it looks like bread. share bread? Does it just mean here is bread? Thank you. <laughs> what does it mean? That means, share bread? I thought it means that, to eat with them. Hospitality. Have dinner together? It, hospitality. What did you say, Layla? I said it means to eat with them. Mr. Dan. I was thinking. And then there's a little Mr. Topic. Dan. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Dan. Mr. Dan. Dan. Yes. Um. <laughs> Um, um, so I remember in one of the classes, mm -hmm. um, uh, it was like, don't eat with, uh, don't walk or sit or eat with the evil. Okay, so yeah, that, that's one of the things we have to be careful who we sit and eat with. Mr. Dan? Yeah, what Mr. Dan? Uh-huh. Also, I think he's like saying that he's, he used to share with Okay. David, you share with the food. Right. What's the of like the Lord's Supper, like break the bread? Right. We that it's interesting. I it's my handwriting is getting really scribbly there because I'm trying to do it fast. So David is saying this is a guy that I shared bread with, which is clearly more important than here is a slice of bread for you. <laughs> Let's and bread for lunch together let's share together and then in the new testament yes there were times when they shared bread like jesus broke off bread and ended up breaking off enough pieces to feed over five thousand people that was just bread but another new testament thing about bread is the lord's supper and so in this little psalm share bread all of a sudden goes so many ideas. Mr. Yeah. Dan, Mr. Man? Uh, just a second, Dennis. Dennis and Thomas? Giving bread to someone in need of betrays you. That's Judas and Jesus. Oh, my God. Giving bread to someone in need betrays you sounds like Judas and Jesus? Yes, Dennis? Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. What was that, Dennison? Uh, like also in the Bible, when Jesus was preparing to die, he said in the Lord's Supper in the Bible, he said, "Take this bread yeah. to the disciples." Yes, and he shared a piece of bread with Judas, and he said, "What you have to do, do it now." Did Jesus know that Judas was betraying him? Yeah. yeah. Well, wow. I was talking about and, and, and he, so in the psalm, this guy is lifting up his heel. I don't know how to, there's not enough room for a heel. Um, um, here is his heel. It's not meant to look like a totally silly picture. I just didn't have any room for a foot and a heel. But he's lifting <laughs> up a heel to hurt. After he shared bread. This is sad. It's not just my friend. The poem says, my familiar friend is betraying me. How does David feel? Not happy. Depressed. Yeah. yeah. Sad. Betrayed. Yeah. All right, let's go back to the text. You guys are making some really cool connections. Hey, Daddy, I have one. I, well, I got to keep going, Alan. Sorry. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. But you, O oh Lord, have mercy and raise me up. I think David means up out of the couch. But what does raise mean as we've been talking about it today? Just from the couch? No, from its feet. Right. But I'll, I haven't drawn David in a while, so I'm gonna draw David with happy hands because David can be raised up. But we also know 
that this raising might be from the tomb as well. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon me and raise me up that I may requite them. This is an old fashioned word that means repay. Does David, as the king, have the authority to use the sword? Yes. David is the judge and the ruler, right? Maybe Mr. Dan, too? Yeah? I have, like, I, I connected that with who, if, when Jesus said to live by the sword, then die by the sword. Oh, that's a neat connection. And so David is going to be raised up to repay and punish the enemies, right? You can think about this person also. By this I know that you delight in me, because my enemy does not triumph over me. Did David's enemies triumph over him? Yes, and then no. Okay, but so the answer is no. He might have lost a battle, he might have had a hard day, but did David lose? No. No. Remember Psalm 18? where God came breathing fire and smoke out of his nostrils. David said, by you, I can, uh, you have trained by your gentleness. You have trained my arm for war and I could run against a troop and I can leap over a wall. David is a victor. David is the victorious one by God. And so here he says, by this, I know that you delight in me because my enemy doesn't triumph over me. But I keep thinking about Jesus. Did the enemies of Christ triumph over him? Yes. No, they didn't, because he came out of the tomb. As for me, you uphold me in my integrity and set me before your face forever. Integrity means you're the, the, the character that you have, the goodness about you, um, your effort to try, your effort and work to be a good person. Was David perfect no and no we know about some sins from david but was david a good man yes yes, yes. so there's the difference right did david sin well yeah yeah but was he good yes yes and so his integrity that's what we need to learn from this psalm that's what we need to think about we might be on a couch of languishing we might have enemies, we might even have a friend who becomes an enemy, but we need to be good. We need to not throw swords and rocks at people, but be good, to have good integrity, because that is who God is with. I'm gonna read the last verse and then I'll read the whole thing through. Blessed be the Lord God, the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting, amen. All right, let's read the whole psalm and think about it together. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the day of evil. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed in the earth. And deliver not thou him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will support him on the couch of languishing. Thou makest all his bed in sickness. I said, O oh Lord, have mercy upon me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil against me, saying, When shall he die in his name? Perish. And if he come to see me, he speaks vanity. His heart gathers iniquity to itself, and when he goes abroad, he tells it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, cleaves fast to him, and now that he lieth, he will rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon me, and raise me up, that I may requite them. By this I know that you delight in me, because mine enemy does not triumph over me. As for me, you uphold me in my integrity and set me before your face forever.
Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. This last verse, you can memorize this. You don't even have to memorize every word and get it perfect. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. You guys almost have it completely memorized, don't you? Let's all do it together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from to everlasting. Amen. Amen. You can use that in your own prayers. Did you know that you are allowed to use the Bible when you pray? Yes. And when we sing. They do that in church when they pray. Yeah. Well, you know what? Did you know that children are whole people and that you can do stuff like that too? You don't have to wait until you're an adult. All right. Do you guys have any thoughts or questions about the psalm? You did a really good job making connections. Did you like it? I have something. Mm -hmm. Yes. A betraying thing? Someone betrayed a prince. Mm. You know that from and a story? Another person betrayed a king. Mm hmm. That happens a lot with kings and princes and stories, even in the Bible. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that this was a really good psalm for us to do. You guys did great. You can turn around and teach this to your mom and dad and your grandma and your grandpa and your neighbor and the guy who lived down the street. Go for it. See you later, guys. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Dan. Bye.